In 1969, the world watched as Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon. But what most people don't know is that the rocket that carried him there was designed by a man who once wore an SS uniform. A man who built weapons for Adolf Hitler, who used slave labor in underground tunnels where thousands died building machines of war. His name was Werner von Braun, the father of the Saturn V, the man who gave America the moon after giving Hitler the V2 rocket. This is the side of the space race no one wanted to talk about. How America's greatest scientific triumph was built on the ashes of war. And this story starts not in space, but in a tunnel beneath a mountain. In the spring of 1945, Nazi Germany was collapsing. Cities were in ruins. Troops were surrendering. And in all the chaos, a small group of scientists made a deal. These were the engineers of Hitler's rocket program, the minds behind the V-2 missile, the first object ever to reach space, a weapon so fast it struck before the sound even arrived. One of these scientists was Werner von Braun, a 33-year-old wunderkind who had joined the SS, shaken hands with Hitler, and supervised the development of the deadliest missile the world had yet seen. He and his team didn't want to be captured by the Soviets, so they surrendered to the Americans. But not empty-handed, they brought rocket plans, experimental engines, and resumes of war. They also brought a half-assembled V-2, packed into 300 crates. The US saw an opportunity, a new enemy, the Soviet Union, was rising, and the Cold War had already begun. So military leaders created Operation Paperclip, a secret program to smuggle Nazi scientists into the United States. At least 1,600 German scientists were brought to America, some directly from concentration camps, with their SS records erased. The public wasn't told. The press wasn't allowed in. The war crimes were quietly filed away. The engineers got new jobs, new homes, and in some cases, new names. They didn't go to trial. They went to Texas. Von Braun and his team were settled at Fort Bliss, where they started building test rockets for the U.S. Army. This is uh, one of the proudest and most significant days in my life. It's almost like getting married to become a citizen of the United States. While Werner Von Braun was shaking hands in Texas, American troops in Germany were uncovering what he left behind. Deep in the Harz Mountains, they found a massive underground factory carved into the rock, a secret site where rockets were built by hand, and thousands died doing it. The place was called Mittelwerk. It produced over 5,000 V-2 rockets, but it wasn't just a factory. It was a graveyard. More than 60,000 prisoners were forced to work there. At least 10,000 died inside. Some were children, others were elderly, but all were disposable. Shift work ran 18 hours straight. Prisoners died standing up. If one collapsed, another was chained in their place. Executions were public. One man was hanged from a crane, left there for days. The SS reused coffins, six corpses in a box, stacked and buried. Von Braun visited this site repeatedly. He claimed he didn't know what happened inside, but multiple witnesses saw him in the tunnels. Some said he watched a man beaten to death and turned away. When the Americans found Mittelwerk, they took the blueprints, took the rocket parts, took the scientists, and buried the rest under a label, strategic interest. By the early 1950s, Werner von Braun had a new home, a new job, and a new story. The press called him a rocket genius, the army called him an advisor, and soon the American public would call him a hero. And in 1955, he made his national television debut on Disney. Walt Disney invited him to co-host a new science series, an upbeat animated guide to the future. And there he was, the man who once built weapons for Hitler, now standing beside Mickey Mouse, teaching children about space travel. The show was a hit, 40 million people tuned in. Man in Space was so popular, President Eisenhower reportedly ordered copies for the Pentagon. America loved it. Von Braun became a household name. He wrote editorials, published books, posed for Life magazine with a plastic model of Mars. He wasn't hiding anymore. He didn't need to. The public saw what they were shown, a brilliant scientist who escaped tyranny to help America win the future. He didn't have to lie because by now, no one was asking questions. In 1958, after the Soviet launch of Sputnik, the United States panicked. 
first time anybody has ever been able to get anything out that far in space and keep it there. The world's first satellite wasn't American. It wasn't even Western. It was Russian. And it was beeping over American skies. In response, Congress created NASA, a civilian space agency designed to win the space race. But behind the scenes, it wasn't very civilian at all. Of NASA's founding engineers, dozens came from Nazi Germany. Many, including Von Braun, were placed in senior roles. The man who once dreamed of hitting London was now America's best shot at the moon. And the money poured in. NASA's budget multiplied 12 times in just four years. It wasn't just rocket science, it was Cold War propaganda. And Von Braun was his poster boy. NASA wasn't just racing to the moon, they were racing to rewrite the past. And behind every Saturn V rocket was a ghost the cameras never saw. And in the same year NASA was founded, the CIA launched its first successful reconnaissance satellite, codenamed Corona. It could read a license plate from 100 miles in the air. And the rockets that would carry astronauts were initially built for war. NASA didn't design its first launch vehicles, it just rebranded them. The Redstone, Atlas, and Titan rockets that launched early US space missions were all originally built to carry nuclear warheads. And NASA's civilian label made it easier to mask military activity. In the fog of the Cold War, that was worth everything. From 1959 to 1972, NASA's rockets were used to launch over 100 Department of Defense satellites. Some were for reconnaissance, others for electronic eavesdropping, and some no one ever explained. In fact, of the first 30 rockets launched by NASA, 27 were former military missiles. And it wasn't just spy satellites. NASA rockets carried military payloads for over 100 missions between 1959 and 1972, including surveillance tech, nuclear monitoring devices, and systems used to eavesdrop on Soviet radio traffic. But the US had plans for the moon. And in 1959, the Air Force had an idea. Blow it up. It was called Project A-119, a classified plan to detonate a nuclear bomb on the lunar surface. The goal? To create a visible mushroom cloud so large the Soviets could see it from Earth. The logic was as simple as it was insane. If America couldn't be first to the moon, it could be the first to scar it. Among the physicists who quietly contributed? A 26-year-old man named Carl Sagan. He kept it secret for decades. Eventually, Project A-119 was scrapped. Too risky, too provocative. But it wasn't the last time NASA's public image hit a darker truth. In 1967, three astronauts were preparing for launch. Their mission was Apollo 1, the first manned flight of the program. But during a routine test, something went horribly wrong. A spark ignited the pure oxygen atmosphere. Within 17 seconds, all three men were dead. They had no way out. And when investigators arrived, they found melted wires, flammable materials, and years of ignored warnings. Gus Grissom had sounded the alarm months earlier, even hung a lemon on the simulator. NASA brushed it off. After the fire, they blamed the crew. It took public pressure and a grieving nation to force a real investigation. NASA quietly overhauled the capsule and sealed the worst reports from public view. Because behind the scenes, the culture inside NASA was shifting. Mistakes weren't always corrected. Sometimes, they were buried. Engineers who raised concerns were sidelined. Budget cuts pushed deadlines. And the pressure to perform, to beat the Soviets, never let up. NASA couldn't afford another public disaster until they got one. January 28, 1986, a classroom full of children watched live as teacher Krista McAuliffe prepared for liftoff aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. 73 seconds after launch, the shuttle exploded. Seven crew members died instantly. The world was in shock, but behind closed doors, engineers had seen it coming. They warned NASA not to launch in cold weather. NASA launched anyway. Why? Because the mission had already been delayed. Because of public relations. Because someone decided the risk was worth it. The Challenger disaster wasn't just a tragedy. It was a symptom of a space program where silence was safer than truth. Where success was more important than safety. In 1969, Werner von Braun received the NASA Distinguished Service Medal. His SS passed, Middlewerk, the corpses in the tunnels, never mentioned. 
He wasn't alone. The truth stayed buried, along with the bodies. Project A-119 wanted to nuke the moon. Apollo 1 burned three astronauts alive. Challenger exploded on live TV after warnings were ignored. Behind the dream was a pattern. Silence. Suppression. Optics over honesty. NASA changed the world, but it didn't begin with a vision. It began with a deal, and a belief that history could be rewritten, as long as the cameras were pointed up.